morning, everybody. Whether you're here in church or whether you're joining us online this morning, a warm welcome to worship. And we've just got a few notices. We've got all the coffee pots are happening as usual this week. On Thursday evening this week at 7.30 for 8 o'clock, we've got Caris at St. Mary's. Please join us for that. It's a really, really good time of teaching and worship. And then two weeks, well, sorry, two weeks yesterday, on the sat- Saturday the 2nd of April, Ronnie, this is for you, Ronnie, <laughs> we've got a church clean-up. So we've got quite a lot of stuff, but if you've got stuff at home that you want to bring for yourself, then that's fine. Michael's not here at the moment, so hopefully next week we'll have got a, a few more details. But he did say there would be lists made out. So just bring yourself, really, if that's, um, that would be really helpful. And it's between 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock. You don't have to come for the full time. If you can come for part of that, that would be really helpful. Uh, the more, the merrier, and the, obviously the quicker it will get done. So now we're going to start our service with prayers for the Ukraine. So holy and gracious God, we pray for the people of the Ukraine and the people of Russia. We lift their countries and their leaders before you, the hope of the nations. We pray for all those who have the power over life and death, that they will choose for all people life and life in all its fullness. We pray for those who choose war, that they will remember that you direct your people to turn our swords into plowshares and seek for peace. We pray for leaders on the world stage, that they are inspired by the wisdom and courage of Christ. Above all, Lord, today we pray for peace for Ukraine, as we light this candle, asking for the light of your love to shine in the present darkness. We ask all this in the name of your blessed Son. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Your love is amazing. Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing, hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, your love makes me sing, hallelujah, 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 your love, yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, sing Hallelujah. Your love makes Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Your love makes me sing Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, Lord. Your love makes me sing. Your love is amazing. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing. It's surprising, I can feel it rising, all the joy that's growing. Yeah, every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God song rising up in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing, yeah, hallelujah. Oh, sing hallelujah. Your love makes me sing, verse one. Your love is amazing, steady, and unchanging. Your love is a mountain. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Verse 2. Your love is surprising, I can feel it rising All the joy that's growing deep inside of me Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through I can feel this God song rising up in me Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah Your love makes me sing Hallelujah, 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 yeah, hallelujah, sing hallelujah, your love makes me sing, hallelujah, 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 just our voices, are you ready? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh, we'll sing hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, your love makes me sing. Your love makes me sing. Your love makes me sing, 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 yeah. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Your love makes me sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. We stand and lift up our hands. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Awesome is he, and together we sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. The earth we stand we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we sing let everyone sing Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. Yes, the earth is filled with his glory. It's rising up. Now, yes, it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of it's rising up, yeah, it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord rising up, it's rising up all around. Together we sing, everyone sing, together, together we sing, let every heart sing, sing holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. You know, the prophet Isaiah says, The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as surely as waters cover the sea. And he's been a pretty accurate prophet. Got the stuff about Jesus, right? So as we sing this song, we are anticipating, we're looking forward to saying, yes, amen, God, please do it. Let the earth be filled with the knowledge of your glory. Let this nation be filled with the knowledge of your glory. Let Rotherham be filled with the knowledge of your glory. Let my street be filled with the knowledge of your glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with your glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with your glory. Yes, the earth is filled. Just sing this refrain after me. Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Holy, holy. Can you try that? Holy, holy 
is the Lord Almighty, holy, 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 holy is the Lord Almighty, holy, holy, and it's rising up all around. Is the anthem of the Lord's renown? Yes, it's rising up all around. Is the anthem of the Lord's renown? Together we sing. Together we sing. Together we sing, oh, let everyone sing, sing holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory, holy is the Lord. God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. Yes, the earth is filled with His glory. Um, just before the, um, we have the reading, as we were just singing that, um, the Lord gave me a, a picture of a huge chandelier with lots and lots of lights in it. And it was the brightness, the brilliance of it that really, I could, in my mind's eye, I couldn't take my eyes off it. But then I just noticed there were a few light bulbs missing here and there. And I just got a sense that God was saying, you know, there are people that light, a few people whose, whose lights have been uh, diminished. And I don't know if that's how you're feeling, but if you are feeling that your lights have been diminished a little bit, just have a word with me afterwards or with Carol or Julie, and we'll have a pray about it. Um, so now our drama group are going to bring us the story. <laughs> Of Zacchaeus, that is not a good sign. <laughs> oh, I really wanted to see this, Jesus. But I'm so sure I can't see. I know. I'll climb that sycamore tree. Then I'll see him as he passes by. What are you doing up there? Put it down from that tree because I want to stay at your house tonight. Come on. So Zacchaeus scrambled down from the tree and joyfully took Jesus back to his house. <laughs> but the crowd were grumbling. Jesus, Jesus has become the house, house guest of this man who is a notorious sinner. What on earth is he doing? But Zacchaeus stood up. Lord, Lord, here and now I give off my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. 
Salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man comes to seek and serve the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. And now it's time for the children to leave and for their group. So, Julie, let's pray for Julie. And there's, if the children would like to come down to the front and we'll pray. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for these little ones. We just pray for the Julies as they lead them in there learning for today lord and we just pray that they have a good time together that, that your holy spirit speaks to each one of them through all that they're sharing together in Jesus' name amen now i'd like to invite chris to come and bring us god's word So good morning everyone and if you hadn't noticed we are looking at Zacchaeus today the tax collector who met Jesus when he was traveling through Jericho now Zacchaeus was a very rich man but his wealth was obtained by unscrupulous means. As a Jewish tax collector working for the hated Romans, he was able to extort as much money as possible from the people. And then after a certain amount was given back to the Romans, the excess he kept for himself. And with the might of the Roman army behind him, nobody could stop him. It was essentially legalized theft. And as a result, tax collectors were deeply unpopular in Israel. They were considered as being traitors to the Jewish people much like collaborators were in a, in a Nazi-occupied country. And Zacchaeus knew that he was stealing from people, so I'm sure that he would have been plagued by a guilty conscience. And knowing that he was so hated must have meant that he had no self-respect and his small stature would have only compounded his feeling of inferiority. All his money, his possessions, and worldly pleasures would not have been able to satisfy the emptiness in his heart. And today there are millions of people like that. On the surface, they appear to have it all made. But rip off the veneer and you will find that they are often painfully insecure. They have a God-shaped hole in their hearts. And people think they can fill that void with worldly things such as riches and sinful pleasures. But ultimately, those things fail to satisfy. And they usually end up doing more harm than good. But Zacchaeus decided to do something about his empty life. And he seeks out Jesus. He had probably heard the buzz that was going around the country about him. He had probably heard about all the lives that were being changed, about the people who were being healed, and about the many people 
who are now following Jesus. He probably knew Matthew, a fellow tax collector whose life had been dramatically changed by Jesus and was now one of his disciples. He probably thought if Jesus could do so much for others, then surely he could do something for him. If only he could just see Jesus, maybe he could find the answer he seeks. And he was prepared to go to any length to do so. It's like that when you're hungry for something, and Zacchaeus had a spiritual hunger. He had tried all the junk food that the world had to offer, and he found it unsatisfying. He now had a hunger for the bread of life, and he was desperate to satisfy that hunger. But achieving that goal wasn't easy. He was small in stature, and it says that he was hindered by the crowd. Poor little Zacchaeus. I can just imagine him stuck at the back of the crowd. Everyone head and shoulders above him. And there he was, standing at the back on tiptoe, jumping up and down, trying to, to get a glimpse of Jesus. And we can be sure that the crowd weren't going to be very helpful. They weren't going to say, O oh, Zacchaeus, pillar of our community, here, come to the front where you can get a better view. No, it was more like, oh, look, it's that scoundrel Zacchaeus again. We're not going to do him any favours. And I can imagine they were closing ranks to deliberately try and block his view. And today, the devil can place obstacles in front of those who are seeking Christ. He can place worldly distractions along the path. They may get ridiculed in their quest, and some may well even dissuade them from becoming Christians. And when Zacchaeus couldn't get through the crowd, he might well have been tempted to just give up and turn away. But no, Zacchaeus was determined to overcome his obstacles and he decided to find another method of seeing Jesus. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree to get a better view. So now the chief tax collector of the city was now perched in a tree like a ten-year-old boy. So much for his dignity. It must have been quite a humorous spectacle for the crowd to see Zacchaeus make a, an absolute fool of himself. And finally, they got to have a laugh at his expense for once. But Zacchaeus didn't care. Nothing was going to stop him from seeing Jesus, even if it meant being ridiculed. And when Jesus finally approaches, an amazing thing happens. Jesus stops right below the tree, looks up, and calls him by his name. Out of the thousands of people thronging to see Jesus, he singles out Zacchaeus. You see, Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was going to be up that tree all along. He knew his name. He knew his sins. He knew his heart. He knew everything about him. It wasn't so much Zacchaeus seeking Jesus, but rather it was Jesus seeking Zacchaeus. 
And the truth is that none of us would be able to find Jesus unless he finds us first and opens our eyes to see him. And nobody is beyond the reach of Jesus. Wherever we are, whatever our position in life, Jesus is able to find us. As he said, says at the end of this passage, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. When Jesus stopped and spoke to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus probably expected to get an angry rebuke from Jesus for his sinful lifestyle. But despite having a long catalogue of sins, Jesus did not judge or punish him. Jesus was friendly and supportive and accepting of Jesus. You see, Jesus is more interesting in changing people's life, lives than he is in condemning people. As Jesus himself said in John chapter 12, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. It's like the prodigal son who returned home after squandering his family inheritance. The father didn't chastise him for, for being so foolish. Instead, he gave him a hug and welcomed him home and laid on a feast to celebrate his return. It's called unconditional love. It's an example of grace, the unmerited favour of God. We don't deserve God's favour. Quite the opposite. We deserve to be punished. But instead of punishing us, he showers us with his affection. That doesn't mean that our sin or Zacchaeus' sin didn't go unpunished. That would be unjust. But rather than the punishment being meted out upon Zacchaeus or us, it was meted out upon Jesus himself. When he suffered and died on the cross, he took upon himself the punishment that belongs to everyone who believes in him. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Come down immediately, he said. There was an urgency in Christ's call. And when we hear Christ calling us in our hearts, we should not delay in coming to him. In 2 Corinthians it says, today is the day of salvation. We should not put it off another day because none of us know when we will die. It might be tomorrow and then it will be too late. And it says Zacchaeus didn't hesitate. It says he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. He welcomed Jesus gladly. Then and there, Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus into his life and accepted him as his Lord. And he calls him Lord a couple of verses later. And Jesus confirms his salvation by calling him a son of Abraham. This sinful rich man had been saved. The camel had gone through the eye 
of the needle. Zacchaeus had finally found forgiveness, happiness, and eternal life. And he now turned away from his life of sin, which he demonstrated by restoring fourfold all of the ill-gotten gains that he had made from the people he cheated. And he now lived a changed life. Out of gratitude for what Christ had done for him, he gave half of his legitimate wealth to the poor. Rather than hurting others, he was now helping others. Rather than being hated, he was now loved. I wonder if there is anyone here or watching online who can identify with Zacchaeus. Do we have a God-shaped hole in our hearts? Have we sampled the sinful pleasures of the world and found them unsatisfying? Are we now seeking after God? If so, I would urge you to overcome the obstacles that the devil will place in your path and to come to Christ today and to put your trust in him. And then you too can experience God's grace no matter what sins you have committed. He will lavish upon you his love and blessing and change your life both in this world and the world to come. Amen. Let's pray. There's a delightful bit of wordplay in the scripture that we've had. Zacchaeus means pure. It also means Israelite. And Jesus says, for well, this one is also a child of Abraham. So Jesus plays on the words of Zacchaeus' name. And we see him moving from impure to pure through God's grace. Jesus meets Zacchaeus with grace, forgives his sins. The grace leads to true repentance. Let's confess our sins to Almighty God. You made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile all people, yet we have brought disharmony amongst races. Christ, have mercy. You rejoice in our differences, but we have made them a cause of enmity. Lord, have mercy. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, we pray for all Christian people. We pray for Bishop Pete and Bishop Sophie, and for all those in Christian leadership, for those who teach and guard the faith. 
May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and knit us together in the bond of your love. Hear us, Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. Give them the gift of your wisdom and right discernment in all things. We pray particularly today for the leaders in Russia and in the Ukraine, in the United Nations, and all those who are seeking peace. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for our communities, for Brinsworth, for Cackley, for Tinsley, for Treaton, and for Waverley, for all those who live and work there. We pray for those who work for community cohesion and social justice. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Hear us, good Lord. We pray for those who do not yet believe, those who long to know you, the very word of life, those with that God-shaped hole. Open their ears to hear your voice and their hearts to the knowledge of your love and grace in Jesus Christ. Hear us, good Lord. Amen. So in a moment, our online friends and family are going to be leaving us. Um, so we're going to join together by blessing them in the words of the peace. Um, so you might want to stand. And if you're in front of the little camera there and you're happy to turn around and look at it, we're going to give them a wave. Um, and I just need to find my place. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you are all called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's offer a sign of peace to our friends online as they leave. And to one another as we gather or prepare to gather around the Lord's table. <clears throat> 